Hey, this is Guy from iDesign. Wait, what? Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and today we'll make dreadlocks. Specifically short and kind of natural dreads. And next tutorial, we'll use these dreads to create a dreadlock fade type cut, so stay tuned. I have a new pack of dreadlocks wigs on my Gumroad, and I did it differently this time. Instead of an expensive large pack, I made two cheaper smaller packs. Uh, still, there's like seven or eight wigs in each pack, so they're not even that small. They look awesome, highly realistic, and you can apply them on any model you have with a couple of clicks, so go check them out. I'm sure it'll help you so much with your work. And guess what? I've just been authorized for monetization on YouTube and that's all thanks to you and you and you and you really are amazing for helping me do that you know and to celebrate my appreciation to you all I made everything on my store 30% off for the next couple of days so run over there get whatever you want and guess what again I opened a patreon it has really cool perks and different ways to support and you'll get you know, free products and discounts on products and access to tutorial project files and project files of my personal work and tutorial footage that, you know, I cut in editing for any kind of reason. And you can uh, place votes on next tutorials and make suggestions and also even get a monthly one on one kind of help and critique with your own projects from me. And there's probably gonna be more stuff. So um, yeah, link to all these things in the description. Uh, I'm so excited. Follow me on Instagram, at Ojang. Comment, subscribe, share, hit that motherfucking bell. Let's go. Okay, so I have the dome piece here that I have in my packs too. And you can see I have the model here and the sculpt is uh, shrink wrapped on top of my model and it's hidden. Let me delete this selection. And before we start, let me just explain to you how I'm going to approach this. So we're going to create the dreads using the clump settings in the hair material. And the biggest issue with clumping the hair so tightly is that some hairs from one clump are sticking to another clump and kind of escaping and it looks ugly. There's ways to fix it as we're going to see, but the best way to reduce the issue as much as possible is to divide the head into different segments and use separate hair objects for each segment. First we're going to divide the head in half and then we're going to split each half into three different layers. That will give us uh, th six different hair objects. I know it might sound like overkill but trust me it'll save you so many headaches along the way. For separating the two sides of the head we're going to use two selection tags that each hair object will grow on and for separating the layers we're going to use density maps. So first we're going to set the selection tags. So I'm going to go to polygon mode hit UB to create a ring selection and then UF to select the rest of the polygons and we got one half i'm going to select set selection i'm going to call that right half then i'm going to ui to invert selection and i'm going to make sure the tag is not selected then go to set selection again call it left half and now we got two selection tags for each half i'm going to select the dome object make sure the selection tags are not selected and then add here and i don't need these guides so Control command a to select all guides and hit delete and I also drag the hair tools, hair selections, and hair mode menus out because uh, I'll be using them a lot. And in the guides tab, I'm going to tick symmetry, tick show guides. And then I'm going to use the add guides tool with radius 1 and count 1 and length 40 centimeters. And I'm going to start adding guides manually. I'm going to click NB to see the wireframe. And it's not adding any guides. Uh, and I think we need to increase the radius. And it's still not adding any guides, but if we keep increasing the radius to five and zooming in, now we can see that it's adding guides. So we're just going to start adding guides in a kind of an organized way. And sometimes you need to zoom in more to add the guides. It's like it won't, the tool won't catch the surface. And you see I'm adding it kind of as layers. Then I'm going to hit make editable and we have symmetrical guides. And those green circles mean that those guides are unrooted and I try to see if it matters. So I try to move it around. I try to set dynamics and hit play to see if the hair falls. But it looked like it looked fine. However, we're going to fix that later. I should have just set roots now, but we're going to fix that later. So I'm going to use the brush tool and actually no, I'm going to use the comb tool at local Y and hit apply. And then uh, I'm going to start playing with the strength and with the curve till I get what I want. And it's hard to see, but you can see what I did. I'm going to scale it with relative checked in the long world. And that looks pretty good. So 
So I'm going to deselect the top layer and I'm going to use a comb again, hit apply. And I'm going to use the brush tool, make sure collision selected only is checked. I'm going to make sure my model has the hair collider tag on it. Then I'm going to just start brushing the hair down. I'm going to untick symmetry. And so far, so good. Let me rename this as left. Control, command, all drag it. Rename it right. And I'm going to uncheck symmetry from the hair from the simulate menu. And now with the left hair selected, I'm going to deselect all the right guides. Then I'm going to hit invert actually and hit delete. Then I'm going to select the right hair. Let me hide the left hair. I'm going to select all the right guides from the right half. Then I'm going to hit invert and hit delete. And now we got two separate hair objects for each half. Now I'm going to duplicate each half two more times. So we have three hair objects. I'm going to rename them top, mid and bottom for each one. And then I'm going to go to Photoshop and I'm going to use the hairline map that I showed you how to draw in the first Afrotextured Hair Basics tutorial. What I'm basically doing is I'm separating the hairline into three layers. And you can see the three layers here. And I'm basically just kind of creating different shapes and masking out the bottom shape with the top one. I'm saving each layer as a separate file. And then I'm going to select both top hair objects and I'm going to add in the density map the top layer file. I'm going to copy that, paste it into the hair density. Then I'm going to do the same with the mid. I'm going to add to the density map the mid file and to the bottom, the bottom file. And I'm just going to add one of the layers as a texture of to the to the dome object, just so I can see if, like where the guide should be should be placed. And I'm going to hit ND for quick shading to see it better. And looking pretty good. And now I'm going to delete all the guides that don't belong in that layer. So this is the bottom layer. I'm going to unhide. I'm going to hide all the rest of the layers. And I'm just going to select all the layers that are not in the white and delete. Then I'm going to do the same with the mid layer. I'm going to select all the layers in the white and on the layers, all the layers from the top. Let me just add that mid layer to the dome so I can see better and hit delete and do the same with the top layer. And for some reason, it's not showing me the top layer in the texture. It's kind of showing all of them together. I don't know why it's some bug, but I can see a faint like black line. I don't know if you can see it, but I can, I, I'll use that to see where the top layer ends. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Cool. So now we got three different hair objects for each layer for each half, which is six altogether. And now I can start stylizing uh, each layer separately. So I'm just going to scale, use the brush tool on scale mode and just scale up the, the middle layer. And then use the brush tool with move to just kind of brush it down a little bit. Let me delete this guide. I think these guides are shouldn't be there. Cool. I'm going to unhide the top. And inside the top objects, I'm going to create hair selection tags because um, that'll be even easier to control. So I'm going to select just the top layer, hit set selection, call it top. And then I'm going to invert the selection, hit set selection, call that bottom. And these are still in the top layer of the, the top hair objects. And then I'm going to use the cut tool with selected only checked. And I'm just going to cut the top layer of the top here. I'm going to use the brush tool to brush it down. I'm going to make sure selected only is checked. And using these kind of this layer method really helps me control each layer individually and get a more organized kind of layer pattern. All right, let's see how it looks. I'm going to go to the hair material, give it 0 0.012 thickness with a little bit of variation and a little bit of tapering at the end. 
then hit render and it looks horrible. And let's bring down the Ray Epsilon for a second because the eyes are messed up. And the reason it's messed up is because uh, I forgot to attach the selection tag to each half. So I'm going to select all the left half, drag the left selection tag to the link, then select all the right hair objects, drag the right selection tag to the link, hit update guides just for the heck of it and re-render and now we can see that the hair is um, still looking very ugly but at least it's growing in the right way. So I'll be using Cinema 4D's hair material to control the color and specularity as well in this tutorial um, just to show you that you don't need any special render engines to follow these tutorials. Uh, this is all about the hair shape and Cinema's native tools. So I'm just gonna give it some dark color, maybe adjust the sharpness of the specular. Cool. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to up the segments of all the hair. Let's say to, let's say to 100. And then let's add kink. I'm going to add 0.9 at the roots. I'm going to set a scale to very high, which means the noise is going to be very small. And I'm going to up the kink to about 60%. So the hair is pretty kinky. And let's just focus on the top layer for now. So I'm going to up the, the count on the top layer to 8,000. I'm going to add clump. That's looking pretty cool. Let's make some adjustments. I'm going to drag the, the tip clump to the very beginning so that it starts to, the hair starts to clump right from kind of from the root but I still want the root to not be clumped. Let's up the limit to 200 so that each clump, so that we have less clumps and they're more dense. And let's up the clump strength to 20. And that's a bit too strong. The clumps are, the dreads are a bit too small. Now there is one kind of issue that I've encountered a lot where the edges of the clump, the very tips of the clump, the hair is escaping in an ugly way and the less segments you have, the bigger the problem will be. And to fix that, we'll go to the length part. We'll reduce it to 85 with very little variation and we're gonna check the length. And as you can see, it kind of cut away that those, those frizzy ends. And I can add maybe adjust it to 90 and that made it much better. All right, so let's um, let's fix these dreads. I want them to be thicker. So first of all, let's up the count, the hair count to ten thousand. Let's bring down the clump strength and the variation. And we can see that the, the dreads are getting thicker, but let's add more hair to each clump. So let's say 300 so that each dread will be denser. And I'm going to bring down the roots curve to negative, which means it's going to actually reverse clump it. It's going to push away the roots from each other uh, and hopefully they'll hide the scalp a little better. Maybe more than that, maybe minus 0.5. It's not doing a whole lot. Let's grab the whole clump curve and drag it a little bit to the right so that the clump starts later on and now you can see that we can it hides the the scalp a little bit better like the hair kind of covers the scalp better let's add the mid layer and let's kind of refresh the render okay so we can see that there's very few dreads in the mid layer and I thought to fix it by duplicating our hair material and then adding that to the mid layer and then adjusting the clump settings only on that layer. So reducing the limit to 200 and that gave us more dreads, but I forgot to up the hair count. So let's say 6,000 and already we can see we have much more uh, dreads. So let's bring it back to limit 300 and clump at 20% which I think is different than the top, but it's okay for now. Let's add the bottom hair. And when we see the whole thing, I mean, there's a lot of kind of adjustments to do, but it's looking pretty cute right off the bat. So let's use the brush with scale mode and just scale the very top layer off the top hair object. 
because uh, as you can see the dreads on the very very tippity top is um are very short and also let's uh let's brush the hair pieces because i want them to kind of cover the the forehead a little and now i try to brush the right side and as you can see now we we face the issue of an unrooted guide so all i had to do was select all the guides hit set roots on the on that menu and then hit apply and now all the guides are rooted to the scalp and now i can just uh, brush away it kind of i had to delete some guides after doing that but now we're back to square one so let me just kind of bring some of the guides to the front brush them a bit closer to the head And yeah, that's looking way better. Let's bring them a little up. And let's bring the mid layer a bit up too. That's maybe too much. Let's add a light from the right side so we can see a bit better. And I just want to have like a nice kind of gradual shape from the top to the bottom and i want to add a, uh, a guide here and if i add a guide you can see that the guy is straight i'm going to undo that and i'm going to make sure interpolated is checked in the add guides and now when i add guides it's going to kind of adjust them according to the rest of the guides and now i can use that guide to maybe guide the hair better at the on the forehead yeah and i'm just kind of brushing and scaling the different layers of the guides to to get a nicer kind of gradual um, flow from the top to the bottom and let's up the hair count in the mid layer because I don't like how sparse the hair is in the mid layer. And let's actually add our initial hair material to the mid layer just to get the same results. And it's looking much better. So I'm just kind of brushing guides and adding guides. If I see there's like a, um, a patch where you really see the scalp through the hair, I'll maybe add a guide there or maybe brush the guides to hide it. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't because uh, this really strong clump kind of uh, makes the scalp show more. But we can also fix that later. I'll show you how to kind of fix that later without touching the, the these hair objects. Now, as you can see here, this is what I meant when I said uh, hair from one clump is escaping to another clump. And sometimes to fix that, you just need to change the seed on, in the advanced tab on the hair object. And as you can, you can see, that really helped. But now we got hair kind of intersecting with the ear. So I'm just going to try and brush off the uh, guides there and it helps. And sometimes if I want to create a separation between two hair groups, I can make selection tags out of those two hair groups and then drag them to the groups in the partings tab. And it helps separate them, but because we have the clump turned on, uh, it's the clump kind of like intersecting with that parting. Honestly, it's not that bad. And the hair from the mid layer is hiding it. I think it's going to be really fine. So I'm going to stop here. I like how it looks. It looks like a natural kind of um, natural short dreads. You know, the layering system we did really helps the hairs not intersect and not have those ugly kind of like straight hairs protruding and escaping from the clumps. So this is really good. However, I am stupid and I whenever I'm done, I'm always like, oh, what if I do this? And I end up spending way more time doing that little thing. But that's that's how you learn. That's how I don't know. That's how you you, you waste time. Uh, but fuck it. So, yeah. I kept recording and it ended up kind of being a mess before it actually got better. And, and that's the result I'm showing in the in the thumbnail and in the video in the intro. There's very little difference, but that kind of small difference takes a lot of time, especially with hair. And it's that little extra detail 
that you may want, but it drives you crazy. So I kept recording and I'm going to upload this tutorial, including that part to my Patreon because uh, your boy on Patreon and I need extra material to upload there. Now, uh, let me let me be clear on that. I'm never going to deprive information from YouTube just to upload it to my Patreon. The whole point of this channel is to provide, you know, free and accessible information. What I would do is I would upload the stuff that I normally wouldn't upload to YouTube. You know, there's a lot of stuff I added out uh, because I think it might be boring or it might be kind of too complex or too much for YouTube. So, you know, if if that's what I think, it's not necessarily what other people would think. So the extra stuff that I wouldn't normally up upload to YouTube, I would upload to Patreon. That's that's um, that's kind of where I'm I'm going with this. So subscribe to my Patreon if you want to see the extra footage and how I got that extra detail. Really, all I wanted to do was to tighten up each um, dread. That's it. And that created a whole chaos. And you will see how I fixed it in the extra footage. So yeah, that's it. You know, natural dreadlocks. Go to my Gumroad, get the pack. And I have a, another portion to this tutorial. I'm going to upload it as a different video to YouTube where uh, we kind of use this style and change it into a different style with a fade instead of a full head of dreadlocks. And yeah, this is how it's going to look. So yeah, make sure uh, you stay tuned. I haven't forgotten the, the kind of natural curls tutorial too. I already have that. I just wanted to push in the dreadlocks uh, before I do that just because I think uh, a lot of people are waiting to see it. And yeah, that's it. I love you. Have a good day. Peace.